Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch bringing you volume 2 of 5 great game dev websites. The title says it all, basically these are 5 uh, websites out there that are great resources for game developers, be it artists, programmers, you name it. Uh, we're going to kind of run the gamut. And again, your recommendations are vital. So if you have some great sites that you think I should share with the world, do let me know in the comments down below. Now if you're a regular of this channel, you may have noticed it was a little quiet the last week and I have to apologize for that. A bit of emergency, emergency dental surgery kind of took me out of the game for a bit. All good now, so we should get back to the regular recording schedule. So without further ado, let's take a look at five great game dev websites, or volume two as we are calling it. Now the first one is not flashy by any definition at all. By the way, the links for each of these sites will be down below, so don't worry too much about the actual URLs as I'm going through these. The first one we are talking about is Gabriel Gambetta. I'm probably mangling the pronunciation there, but Gabriel Gambetta. Ah. GabrielGambetta.com is Gabriel Gambetta's website, and on it he has a number of resources, and the coolest, newest one is a online book entirely about computer graphics. Um, and it's literally from scratch. Like, take the title of my channel and take it times 10. Uh, this is kind of walking through the pipeline of how computer graphics work at a very, very low level. We're talking not how to use OpenGL or DirectX, but instead how OpenGL or DirectX actually work. Now, I come from an age far enough back where basically you had to do a lot of this yourself. There was a book called Michael Abrish's Zen of Graphics Programming that taught me a lot of the stuff that's covered here. And if you can get your hands on that book, it's a great book still. But this book basically walks through um, the details of actually implementing 3D renders, 3D scene graphs, that kind of stuff. So you can see how the math for say, here's canvas to viewport translations work. So they've got nice graphics on all kinds of aspects of it. And they basically teach you the technique and math behind 3D rendering. Uh, it's a great resource, completely free, completely online. Definitely be sure to check it out. And when you get to it, uh, do go back to the homepage and check out some of his other work. He's done some pretty cool stuff like uh, some documentation on pathfinding, for example, and for multiplayer coding. So great resource, very technical, very detailed though. So be sure to check that out if this is the kind of stuff that interests you. Even if you don't really use this stuff anymore, um, it's, it's good to know, to understand, especially when you get into stuff like shader programming, etc. So a great resource to check out. Uh, the next up, we got one for the artists or people with absolutely zero artistic skill, and that is pixelgameart.org. Now, the artist behind this basically has a Patreon running, uh, and he does a number of free tile sets, constantly releasing them, and they're really high quality work. And basically, what you see here is a number of the ones that are released. If you go to pick one, a number of these are available completely free. For example, Sunnyland was just released. It is a number of different. Um, Assets, so backgrounds and animations, etc., tile works that are ready to go in game form. Now, it goes one step beyond that, and this is pretty amazing. For a lot of these, he actually implements a playable demo using the Phaser HTML game library, which I'll check out the one for this one in a second. You'll see he's got various different things included, and a lot of times it actually includes the uh, PSD files he used. Now, you can download them completely free. Generally, they're a zip file just containing the raw assets. A lot of times they're pretty small in size, 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 pixel resources. Uh, but you don't have to pay. If you do actually like his work, though, do be sure to check out his Patreon page. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, so here is one of the examples of his work in action. So this is a game he's implemented using it, and you can see it is, it's ready to go. So if you're looking for a real high quality art to start your game off with, do be sure to check out uh, pixelgameart.org. The quality of his work is absolutely bang on. Uh, and again, if you are a patron, there is more available, but the stuff he's got out there, just if you're just looking for placeholders for creating a 2D pixel game, this is some of the nicest looking and most complete artwork you can work with. Now, what is a little disconcerting, here is the uh, download page for this particular project for the Sunnyland uh, version two. Uh, I don't find any um, license dis details in here. Let me see if I actually download the archive if there's anything in there. Uh, but I don't see an implicit license, and I hunted around his page for a little bit and didn't see one either. Oh, here we go. So public license is uh, license for everyone, CC by 3.0. So very liberal license, actually. You can do just about what you want with it, to be honest. Uh, generally, that's uh, you have to attribute you the work, uh, but you can use it in commercial work, and you cannot... Uh, you're not required to credit this work. All right, so it's a very, very liberal license he's releasing these things under. Now, I haven't gone through a number of the different packages. I'm assuming that they're all under the same basic license. Do be sure to check that for each one you download. All right, so moving on to the next one. Oops, that's the demo. All right, this one is from uh, viewer suggestions, actually. I had quite a few write-ins about this one and some comments in the last uh, 
video I did. And by the way, please do keep them coming because I was unaware of this guy and that's a shame. So the more you guys make these sites available to me, uh, the more likely I am to be able to share them with everybody else. So yeah, do my work for me, please. And let me know in the comments down below if you've seen some great sites I haven't included here. And just because I don't include them in the next video, don't worry, I am keeping a running title, a running total of them. So they might come in future episodes. But Red Bob Games was recommended a number of times. And my goodness, this is a great site for very specific things. Um, you can see a number of different algorithms are being explained in a very visual manner. So you've got things like graph theory, uh, probability on RPG damage, 2D visibility algorithms, line drawing, curved roads, map generation being noise. Um, and here's, for example, A-star. Now, A-star is a very common 2D pathfinding uh, algorithm. And this is basically explaining it in a, a very, very visual manner. And it's quite cool. You can see they go into a whole lot of depth. There's a lot of um, animations that really kind of illustrate how the algorithms work. Uh, as you can see it being shown in this animation here, it's just, it's staggeringly cool, the kind of things that this guy shows. And then you'll see here, uh, we've got the code being demonstrated in Python. Um, so obviously if you're not a Python developer, it can generally be adapted. This is more about the algorithms than the actual code, but for each step, he's got these amazing um, visualizations that actually show you the algorithms in action and what they will do and a number of different animations, etc., for explaining all these different algorithms. And this is very common um, algorithm requirements for 2D games. And he's kind of nailed some of the most popular ones. This is a really cool site and do be sure to check that out. So that's Red Blob Games. Uh, next up, we're getting into one that is... Um, Actually, I'm kind of cheating a bit. This was one of the game dev tools I featured a while back, but I still love it. And this is uh, bfxr.net. Now the challenge is on the website, this is implemented as a Flash application and more and more so, your browsers are not going to support Flash, which is sort of unfortunate, but um, it's the way of the future. Now don't worry, even if you can't run Flash in your browser, you can go ahead and download it uh, this way. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to run this guy. And I didn't pre-configure this, so I will be right back. Now, here I am in Microsoft's Edge browser as an example, and it can still support Flash, but it's not that intuitive. So I thought I'd show you the process. Basically, if you come in here and go to settings, and then you uh, enable advanced, like so, you can turn Flash on and off. Now, that part seems pretty simple, but where you probably are falling down a little bit on the instructions is now what? Why is this app not showing? Well, you have to click this very unintuitive Get Flash Player thing and then tell it how many times you're going to allow it. But if you've got a Flash-enabled browser, you don't have to do any of that crap. Basically, this is BFXR, um, and it's an audio effect generator. It's very cool. It's probably one of the easiest, uh, you know, 8-bit style sound effect generators out there. So for example, if I need a laser, I can start here and it algorithmically calculates for it. And as you can see, I can do a whole lot of controls over fine tuning how that sound effect to be generated. If I need a jump sound, for example, each one is kind of different and randomized. And you can see they're being saved down here if you want to go back to each one. So it's one of the fastest ways to make algorithmic sounds along a particular style. Um, and then when you're done with it, you can basically just export it out as a WAV file and save it down and you are good to go. So that's bfxr.net. And again, if you don't have Flash enabled, don't worry, there is a download uh, available here. Uh, you can also download the source code. It's available here on GitHub. Uh, the final thing we've got is another website tool and this one, every one of you should know in this day and age, and it's Shader Toy. Now I do worry, uh, do have to warn you up front, Shader Toy will kick the crap out of your web browser and you do need to have WebGL support. But what this guy is basically is a giant um, repository of WebGL or OpenGL shaders. And shaders are taking over the world, obviously, so this is where you would come first, guys. So if you don't want to create your own shaders, do be sure to come here. So for example, if I needed a water shader, very common thing you need, is so come on in here, search for water, and you will see we have 383 results. And there are shaders for so many different things. But if you come on here, so example, I'm just gonna grab one, the most popular one right here. And again, you can see my computer is having its butt kicked. This site loads a little bit too much and it, it, it can be a little demanding on your, on your computer. But so here you can see the shader actually picked. Here it is running. And here is the actual input for the code. Uh, you got the various different settings that control the shader available up here. So these are the uh, inputs that actually run it. Um, and there's the code for the shader, and there is the shader actually running. We can get into some much more advanced shaders. There's all kinds of stuff here, and you can have different channels come in and feed how the shader works. It's 
it, it is one of those websites that again, if you're doing 3D work, you have to add this guy to you because I think we're almost at the point where you don't have to write shaders anymore. You can literally just come to a site like Shader Toy and adapt that shader for your particular needs. And there are, again, an absolute ton of them. You can also use Shader Toy to you know, publish your own shaders if you want to share with the rest of the world. You sign up and then add a new shader in and you're good to go. But again, you will find that this guy is very uh, resource intensive at times. So um, it might chug on your computer and it's probably not the kind of website that you wanna visit um, on battery power if you're using a laptop, for example. It is very intensive, but it is an exceptional resource. It's definitely one that you should be made aware of. All right, so that is it for today's top five sites. We have, oh, Shader Toy is killing my computer. Okay, one second. So we have Shader Toy, which we just uh, talked about. I'm gonna go ahead and kill it so it stops killing my computer. We have GabrielGambetta.com, which is a great resource for learning computer graphics completely from scratch and these other uh, very detailed in-depth documents that he has made available. Uh, we have uh, PixelGameArt.org, an excellent resource for free 8-bit, 16-bit style graphics and a lot of times even like a reference game that's showing you how to use those graphics. We have Red Blob Games, a visual algorithm demonstration site. So if you are looking at 2D pathfinding, 2D vision, etc., this is probably one of the most intuitive ways to learn it. And finally, we have BFXR, a algorithmic-based sound effect generator. Once again, all the links will be down below. And once again, if you have great suggestions going forward or bad suggestions, I guess just suggestions, do let me know down below and hopefully I can include them in a future version of this. Let me know if you still like this series. If so, do hit that like button, please. And if you're new here, this is the kind of stuff we do on this channel. Sounds good to you. Hit the subscribe button. All right, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.